This is the G7X Mark III. The successor to the Mark II, also known as the top choice vlogging camera for content creators on YouTube. After years of saving and somehow perfect timing with the release of the Mark III, I finally got my hands on the camera I've been wanting for so long. Now that I've had it for about two months, I want to share some real world insights, some examples of this thing in action, and my thoughts. All things that might be able to help you decide if this camera is right for you. In case if this is the only G7X Mark III review you're watching, I feel like it's important to include the standard specs of this camera in this video. However, if you're like me, you probably are watching more than one review because you just need to hear everybody in the world's perspective before you spend the money on this camera. So instead of spending a lot of time telling you, I figured I would just show you what I've got written down here. Along with the standard specs of this camera, there are a lot of cool features that are some of my favorites that made this camera really stand out to me and also made me fall in love with this camera knowing that it was the perfect one for me. When I was looking for a small camera to maybe, I don't know, vlog with or just travel and take video and create content with, the thing that was most appealing about this was its portability and that was a thing that I needed. Because I have a wonderful camera that takes beautiful video, however, the downfall of it is it's really big, there's a lot of accessories you need to bring with it, it's also kind of temperamental, you have exchangeable lenses, carrying the lenses around is really nerve-wracking, so I wanted something that was small and compact, and this camera fits that description. Not only is the camera itself small, when the lens pops out, it's still not that big, but it's nice that it's able to retract. Another thing that I love on the side of portability is the size of the battery is so tiny. I can put this in my freaking jeans pocket, and sometimes you're taking these things around and you need to bring extra batteries because you don't know how much you're gonna be filming that day, and it's just really nice to know that if I do have to bring around more batteries, it's something that will still be able to fit into small spaces. The accessories that you have to bring with this camera don't compromise the portability, and I think that's super important. When I watched a video showing this camera fit into a hip pack, I was sold. So here are all the small places this thing can fit into. Something that was really standout about the Mark III, of course, was the access to an audio input, also known as a microphone jack. And this is really great for those people who want to make high quality vlogs or high quality content using this camera. Now, the only downfall is that there is no soft shoe mount, so you have nothing to mount a microphone to. So the Rode Video Micro, the Rode Video Micro Plus, Micro, Pro Plus, whatever this microphone is called that I have on my camera, I would not be able to attach to here. However, you can plug things in and then put this microphone on an additional tripod. So I just like that option for me because in my day-to-day -day vlogging or whatever I might be using this camera for, I'm probably not gonna need or want to use a microphone for it. However, what I think about is like going on a vacation, sitting in a hotel room and wanting to film a sit-down video. If I bring my microphone with me and just an additional tripod, I can plug that into here, have the microphone input set up, and then it's like a fancy setup without all the big gear that like a DSLR brings you. And lastly, something that I think is kind of slept on on this camera is that there is a lot of functions on here. Commonly, this camera is just viewed as the vlogging camera. The G7X Mark II, if you think of that, you think of YouTube vloggers and you don't think of really anything else with this camera. However, what I've learned through not only testing it out, but through my own use and discovery is that it can do a lot more than just record a vlog. It can take beautiful video, it can take fantastic photos, great selfies might I add, and there are a lot of different modes on this dial up here. So you've got your manual, you've got scenes, you've got aperture priority. There's just a lot of things that are going on here that make it more than just a vlogging camera. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize is that the PowerShot series that Canon makes are designed to be digital cameras. And then somebody found that, oh wait, this works great as a vlogging camera too. So if you do end up picking up this camera, really explore the possibilities it has and get the most bang for your buck. This wouldn't be a complete review without some examples of this thing in action. So without further ado, roll the footage.
throughout this video, you're going to see this pop up on screen. And that means that footage is being filmed using the G7X Mark III, just like this footage is. It's the audio and video straight from the camera. It's right about golden hour right now, and so I decided to head to my nearest park so that way I could get some B-roll to get some photos so you can really see how this camera acts when it's nice lighting out. This is a prime example of what the video looks like. I'm just walking, holding this handheld, not trying to stabilize my motion really in any way, except keep my hand obviously just normally steady. This is what the footage looks like with this beautiful golden hour lighting. And you can also see how the autofocus works when I'm moving out, change of exposure, but I do have it on manual right now. So I'll go ahead and change it to auto so you can see that. So now I've got the camera on the automatic movie exposure, which you can see it adjusts the light so much nicer than doing it manual, which of course that's what you're gonna get shooting automatic versus manual. But this is just in the movie mode with the auto exposure and I personally like shooting this a lot better. The focus doesn't really change versus going to manual or not. Now, of course, one of the huge benefits to the G7X Mark III is this fantastic flip-out screen that I'm recording on right now. Not only does this come in handy when you're filming yourself like I am, I can see myself here, but it is also fantastic for when you're trying to take some killer selfies. And let me tell you, this camera does exactly that. The other pretty sick thing about this camera is vertical video. <laughs> The super cool thing about vertical video is it's great for content creators of all sorts online, especially in the age of TikTok, IGTV, Instagram in general. Having a vertical video supporting camera is really great for content creators who want to make high quality content on a budget. You're maybe not looking at getting a DSLR like this guy over here, but you still want to put high quality content out onto social media platforms. This is a video and audio example on a not exactly a busy street, but a street with cars going down it. This is what it sounds like. Just guess my arm out. But I didn't say anything. Just have my arm out and I'm just vlogging. And this is what the footage is like. See, this is an issue I come across quite often is I'll turn on the camera and then I'll look up and then I'm not in focus. However, once I find the focus again, it's great, everything's fine, but Sometimes I have to do a little bit of this. It is definitely not that Canon dual pixel autofocus. It's definitely not a power on, flip up the screen and start talking kind of thing. It's a power on, flip up the screen, kind of like do one of these things, pull it out a little bit, not trust yourself, and then finally admit that you think you're in focus enough to continue filming. Also, nobody ever said that this was Canon's dual pixel autofocus. I'm just, there's a clear difference. There we go, it found me. These colors look weird. My face doesn't look that orange normally, does it? Yeah, see there's a lot of light over here. I'm learning with you, but this is what this looks like at 6.03. I've got one light up there, but otherwise it's kind of darkened up now. I feel like this is more realistic also of how much of a struggle it is to find focus on this thing. Oh God, wow, look at that. Whoa, this is, this is weird. Here are some video examples from different vlogs and videos when I use this camera at night so you can see how it performs in low light. I feel like it's not actually too bad, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to predict how it's going to act. Okay, I've had this camera for probably about two months now, and I have to say, after like the hour-ish I've been out here filming, and playing with this thing, I've fallen more in love with it than I thought I could, which I'm just so pumped about. I was definitely worried for a period of time that I made the wrong choice and that I'd spent my money on the wrong camera, especially with how many people were talking about the autofocus issues. And don't get me wrong, it's a big issue, but I feel like the perks and the features and the overall quality of this camera besides the autofocus really make it worth it. Okay, the audio might be an issue right now. <laughs> Especially with the fact that this camera is compared so much to the Canon M50 and it does have that dual pixel autofocus, that's one thing that I constantly was on my mind. Did I make the right choice? Let me get somewhere quieter to talk about that. 
If we are talking Canon G7X, I think we need to talk Canon M50. I know this is not a Canon M50 review or even a Versus review, but I wanted to include this little piece because I feel like often the M50 and the G7X are compared, and in my opinion, I don't think they should be. I think the only reason why the G7X lineup is compared to the M50 is because of the price. The G7X Mark II and the Canon M50 both go for around 600 bucks right now on Amazon. And so yes, they are comparable in price. However, I think in every other way, they are vastly different. They're both relatively small cameras, but the G7X wins on the small, compact, portable front. When we look at the Canon G7X, it is a power shot Canon G7X Mark II or Mark III. The power shot lineup of the Canon cameras is essentially Canon's digital point and shoot cameras. When we look at the M50, that is a mirrorless camera. It's an entry level mirrorless camera, but a mirrorless camera nonetheless. Now, to be completely honest, I still can't wrap my head around what the differences or the benefits of having a mirrorless versus non mirrorless camera is. All that I know is the mirrorless camera fits more into the DSLR likeness category versus a simple power shot. Now, I'm not trying to knock down the power shots by any means. They are small but mighty, but a mirrorless camera has a lot more to it. The M50 in particular has higher ISO range, it has higher megapixels, it has inner interchangeable lenses, which is huge. It also has a soft shoe mount, so if you want to put a microphone on there or a light or whatever you might be needing, you can. I think when it comes to the debate of the M50 versus the G7X Mark II, or in this case, the Mark III, even though the Mark III is a little bit more expensive, I think it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for your only camera that you're going to be using for video, photo, content creation of any sort, the M50 is an excellent choice because it is versatile. It's small, but you can add a different lens onto it to change how the camera works and how it looks. The G7X doesn't have that versatility. However, what it doesn't have in versatility, it gains in portability. This camera is so small. Yeah, it doesn't have removable lenses, but the lens itself retracts into the camera. So you don't have to worry about hitting your camera lens on things or will it fit into this certain bag. This thing is so small, it's just like a little rectangle. But when you go over to the M50, it's way more than just this. When I was doing my research on the Canon G7X Mark II, the M50 kept coming up in conversation. Whether it be in articles or videos that I watched, the M50 was always mentioned, and I get it. They're the same price point, but I think they're also very different cameras that serve different purposes. I had a lot of almost buyer's remorse once I got this camera, because I worried, did I spend my money on the best camera? And to be honest, no, I didn't. I think the M50 is a better camera. However, I spent my money on the best camera for me because that's what the G7X Mark III is. It's the best camera for me. It serves all the needs that I have. And if I would have bought the M50, I would have not been happy because it's not small enough. Yeah, it can have interchangeable lenses and the, the microphone and all that fun stuff, but I have a DSLR that already does that. I was looking for something smaller, something less cumbersome. And that's what this camera is. And that's how I knew that this was the one for me. So since the G7X Mark II was really picked up by the vlogging and YouTube community, Canon has started to market it more as a video camera versus a camera for capturing photos. But I do have to say, even though it has been marketed more towards the vlogging community, it is still a fantastic, photo capturing camera. This thing packs a punch with its 24 to 100 millimeter lens. It goes from f1.8 to f2.8. It has the 4.2 optical zoom, all the standard specs that I shared in the beginning of this video, but I just wanted to tell you that this thing is really fantastic, honestly. I knew that this camera was gonna be good at taking pictures just from like reading the specs, but I didn't know no until I took it out for a spin, actually for the purpose of this video, and boy was I impressed. It actually made me fall more in love with this camera and I was just so surprised at the quality and the caliber of photos that I took. All the photos that I took in my little test round, I actually made a highlight for on my photography Instagram. So if you go to at Annalise.photo, you can check those out. As well as I'm gonna post a picture on my actual feed if you wanna check that out and it's a little higher quality, bigger resolution so you can see it. And I was just really impressed. It made me fall even more in love with this camera and secure in knowing that if this was the only camera I was gonna take with me on vacation or whatever it may be, and I wanted to capture video and photos, I could do both and do it beautifully. So this little guy is just more than a vlogging camera. It's got other things too. Also, great selfies. This, it's a good time. This is just, it's just, I'm impressed. I'm always impressed with this thing. Okay, I said it probably 10 times throughout this video and I'll say it again. 
I love this camera. I think it is a fantastic piece of technology. It's small but mighty. It is a great camera for video and photo, and it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Now, like I've mentioned, it does have one big glaring issue, and that is the autofocus. But also, like I said, that it's a power shot camera. It's not meant to be a big DSLR. I think it could have better autofocus, don't get me wrong, just because it doesn't have dual pixel, it could still have better autofocus. However, there are a lot of things that I love about it that make the autofocus issues bearable. Now, one thing before I forget, when it came to the autofocus firmware update, I did do that and I didn't really see much of a difference. However, I didn't have the camera for long without the firmware update. So I kind of got it, updated it right away, looked at a little bit of the differences, but didn't see much of a difference. If there's a possibility that Canon can release another firmware update to improve the autofocus even more, I would be really excited and grateful for that, Canon, if you're listening. But I think it's deal with a bowl. But like I said, even though it has that one issue, there aren't issues in any other category of the camera, and that's why it wins for me. So with that, that is gonna be the end of my G7X Mark III review. If you have any questions about this camera that I did not answer in this video, please let me know in the comment section down below, as well as if you have any videos that you want me to make about this camera, with this camera, or any videos in general. I always appreciate your suggestions for videos. So like I said, comments below is the perfect place to leave that. I do have a Patreon and a podcast, so if you wanna check either of those out, I'd be super grateful. Otherwise, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you, or at least entertaining in some way. Stay beautiful, have a marvelous day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!